Hi, um, this is MX10, Stefan Kraus, and um, in this tutorial I want to show you how to use different sources from the internet like Facebook, live streams, uh, basically anything that uh, is op can be open in a window in your computer. Use all those things, put them together in a switcher, in a broadcast style switcher, and broadcast that from Touch Designer to a Facebook live page. So to do this, uh, first we need to download a few things. Uh, first of all, we need to download uh, Touch Designer 099. Um, unfortunately, the TDI function only works in Touch Designer Commercial, um, which is understandable if you see what kind of possibilities it opens up for you. Uh, however, for this tutorial, is not really necessary. Basically, everything I describe here you can achieve without Touch Designer Professional uh, Commercial, but uh, is a bit less comfortable, a bit less broadcast style. However, so download whatever um, version of Touch Designer is right for you and install. You will also want to get the um, NewTek NDI tools. Grab them at uh, newtek.com NDI tools. Um, basically, just install all of them. What they allow you to do is to take um, lots of different sources like windows on your computer like uh, your phone's cam like your webcam uh, adobe premiere timeline and so on and provide these sources all over the network as video sources um, and they come in this nice little package basically install all of them um, what you also will need to um, create the stream is um, Open Broadcaster software um, is uh, free and open source as far as I know. Um, download that and install it. And to make things really comfortable, there is this plugin here um, by uh, Palakis, the OBS NDI plugin, which then uh, allows you to open NDI sources in OBS. So, I am assuming that you installed all the software, and if you did, then um, you're in Windows. Then you will find um, here the new tech and the i tools. Uh, first thing we want to have a look at is um, the test patterns. So here you've got a oops, choice of many different test patterns. Uh, and whichever one you select will be on your network as a NDI test signal. Um, so we leave this window just here and um, be aware that you can always um, add another test pattern window. Um, where you select another test pattern. Now you already got two NDI sources on your network. Um, to take a look at these sources, um, you can use another new tech tool. It's called Studio Monitor. And it opens this window, and that basically allows you to select all the NDI sources that are already out there on your network. So in my case, I've got a desktop capture with um, the usual results. I've got um, touch designer out already. That's good. I've got the test patterns. But I can also just capture window of touch designer. So you see all these sources are now already available uh, on my network. And um, the start tool that I find extremely useful um, is this one is called the scan converter. Now if you click the scan converter nothing much happens but in your taskbar uh, you will have this icon you take any scan converter and if you right click it you can start to add 
even more sources as NDI streams. For example, if I choose Google Chrome here, um, I can get all the Google Chrome windows that I have open as inputs on my NDI monitor. And well, there's something wrong with this one. Let's see. Sometimes it also needs a little bit of time to get going, but it's not the point. Usually it works quite well, and the great thing is it doesn't even work only on this computer, but every source on every other computer in the network that you provide in that way will be available for viewing or for using in all on all the other computers which are connected to the network. So um, that is very nice. And the next nice thing is then when you have installed OBS Studio um, from which we are streaming right now um, this tutorial recording you will see that you can add um, from different sources uh, there is also um, a screen recording there you can stream from uh, media sources on your hard disk and so on from uh, game capture but you can also and that's very comfortable add an NDI source and that's Thankful because we installed the plugin before. So now I've got all the NDI sources that I saw before. Again, here in my streaming software uh, where I can use them. By the way, you can scale the stuff. Uh, this uh, works the, so that you define scenes here or you can add sources here. So you can add several live sources to this composition. Let me add another one. Uh, so next in the I source, which can then be for example shown picture in picture. Remember both of these are live streams which are now going out in the live stream that we just record. So if you want to get this stuff onto Facebook you have to go here in the settings on the stream. You have to select uh, Facebook Live. And the important thing is here it wants to know a stream key. So now if you go to Facebook, uh, by the way, there's like a nice thing called Facebook Live Map that shows you all the live streams that are on at the moment. So you can just tune in. We're going to use this later. Um, because I want to show you how you can use this as an NDI source. However, if we now want to go and install this um, as a stream on our site, we go to Content Options, Videos, and then when you have the list of the videos, you see here is a Live button. Now press this Live button wait for this window to come. You can give the video a title and all these kind of things. You can tag, work your social media, whatever. But what you need is to copy this stream key and paste it here. Bam, bam. Now when you start um, your stream, buff, which I'm not going to do because I'm recording a tutorial, but um, I think you get the picture. If you start that stream now, that tutorial would be streamed live onto the Facebook page, where once the signal comes, it will be visible here, and this button will be blue. If I press it, I'm broadcasting live to Facebook. So how do I do that from Touch Designer? That is basically um, not so difficult if you have um, Touch Designer 099 commercial because there's the NDI in and the NDI out object. So while uh, the NDI in allows me to select, now I'm lucky with Chrome. Um, Something's wrong with Chrome. One thing to think about with Chrome is, and maybe I changed that again, is if you have trouble getting signals from Chrome, um, you might want to turn on hardware acceleration on Chrome because that might interfere with the thing. Probably is turned off again. However, that's what we get the test patterns for. So here we get Touch Designer has to be running. We get 
our test patterns again and any other live signals and uh, what we also can do is start sending a live signal and an NDI signal from touch designer in this case it's just called touch designer MX um, and to see if it's really on the network we can go to studio monitor and see here we have touch designer MX which comes in nicely as another NDI source uh, which means again that we can open it also now in um, OBS Studio. In its original resolution. Um, not only that, stuff can come in different resolutions through this NDI, um, it can also come with an alpha channel. I'm not sure if Touch Designer um, supports that. I haven't really looked into it. Um, but in general, it's possible and good to know. So, now back to the task at hand. Uh, let's start with a clean slate in Touch Designer and uh, lay down a new container comp. That's going to be the core of our switcher. That's why we're going to make it a tiny bit bigger. I know it's not good practice to scale nodes, but I just can't say no to it to make things a bit seeming more orderly. We call this switcher. Uh, set the resolution to 1280 by 720. That's a good resolution to send around lots of um, NDI signals. Uh, it's not too much bandwidth. And it's going to work for the non-commercial touch designer versions quite well. Um, so, excuse me, I have to look on my cheat sheet a little bit. This is my first proper video tutorial, and uh, that means I have look sometimes what I do next to not fall for confusion and where I look is um, the tutorial which I already wrote down with lots of screenshots this is also going to be available um, in the link after the video um, and that takes you through the whole thing step by step if you don't want to watch a video but who doesn't want to watch a video that's why I thought I'm also going to create this video. So, what we know is that we want to use 16 sources in our switcher. Not all of them have to be NDI sources. They can also be just regular touch designer sources. However, it's going to be nice to be able to switch them. So, what we need is 16 ins. We need 16 because originally this was designed for an MPC style 16 pad, pad MIDI controller. The MIDI implementation is not so cool at the moment, but what worked really well is to um, just be able to select a video source by clicking on it. So we're going to build a clickable GUI. So now in our container, we know that we need 16 ins, uh, 16 in tops. So we're going to lay down 16 in tops by making one, copy it, and pasting 16 times. So, number 16, number 1, and to make this look nice in the end, we're going to move that in the middle. So, what we also know is that we want to switch between these sources. Um, and what we maybe don't know yet, but what I'm going to tell you now, what we want to have is like an AB style mixer. So, we have 16 sources from which we can always select an A channel and a B channel and then we can mix those two channels for the final output. This allows us to uh, work on one channel while the other one is live on air, prepare a new scene and then switch to that new scene. Everybody who's ever done some kind of live broadcast knows this kind of workflow. So 16 ins, what we need next is like two switches. One. So I'm going to make these slightly bigger. I'm going to call it switch A. And I'm going to make another one. 
and I'm gonna call it switch B. So um now for the fun part we want in any case whatever we do that all of these 16 ins are available in switcher 1 and a switcher B. So what I'm gonna do is select all ins and just connect them to switcher one. That looks beautiful. Because it looks so beautiful, we're gonna do the same thing and select it to switcher B. But we also know that we don't want to work with two signals. In the end we want to have one output which we're gonna to send to Facebook Live. Um though at the end of this I wanna place an out. I'm pretty sure we're gonna need that. And before the out I'm gonna place a cross which will allow us to cross fade between the two um switches. And so we can basically also connect the switches to the cross. And now um, is a good time to save. I'm gonna save this as TD and the I put <clears throat> so next thing we want to do is um, jump out of here and see if our container does what we want and it does, it has 16 inputs and one output so uh, what next thing we want to do is to make something um, which gives us a stand-in content where we don't have a live signal and which B allows us to label all the different ins that we're going to use. My idea was to build like a very clean switcher unit in the middle, have uh, 16 ins and in these 16 ins you can basically plug everything in. All that space on the left is to go really crazy on your networks and try all kinds of experimental stuff which you will then plug in these um, containers where we label the sources and then they will show up very orderly and neatly in the switcher. So um, to get this started we're going to lay down another container comp and this one we're going to call source zero. Zero because we're going to use this as our master uh, which is going to be replicated by um, a replicator node. So let's dive in and lay down uh, text top. Text one, we're going to set this to Arial. We're going to set the um, out to fit if too large. We're going to set the size to 400. Um, yes. And on the text side, we're not going to have. Um, Derivative, um, which is cool because we like derivative. Now we're gonna have this expression, me parent dot digits. Now it doesn't see it as an expression yet. Um, it just shows us the text, so we need to make this interpretation on. And what happens is that this says, well. If there's numbers in the name of my parents, use these numbers. So if this is source 0, this is going to be a 0. Later we're going to have source 1 to 16 and automatically when we copy them, um, their, their number is going to show up here. So we're going to have numbered sources uh, for a pleasure. Also we want to turn this to um, 1280, 720. And um, we want to play a bit with the colors so that every source also has a different color, which makes them easier to handle. First of all, we're going to make the 
on orange because we're going to work a lot with orange here because I think it looks quite good with gray. And for the background color, which we're going to turn on, we're going to use the following expressions. Here we're going to say me parent digits divided by 32. Um, now we want this value to be on RGB. That means that we will get um, different shades of gray for our um, preview sources. Um, in the other ones, we just going to say they should be using the same thing, which is their own value for background color red. Let's not forget to turn background color uh, alpha on so we can actually see it. I think I did everything that we want to do here. Exactly, so um, what we're going to do now is going to work on the rest of our thing. So we're going to add an in. So this in is going to show up on the outside of the container. That's where we can plug our sources. And this one is the default that is going to be sh shown as long as the in doesn't have any input. So as long as you doesn't plug anything, you're just going to see like a black and white image with an orange number of your source. Then to make sure that all your inputs also fit to the processing inside your switcher, you need to add a fit here. And we're going to say this fit vertical. The resolution of this fit is also going to be the little HD. If you have uh, very unusual sources, you might have to change this one to something else. Um, and now we're going to split up the signal. We're going to send one to an out. I'm going to get that later. And we send another one to another text top which again has the resolution of 128720 uh, automatically and um, we're going to use this text to give ourselves a little note um, what is in this stream so we're going to take this font going to make it a bit Bigger, let's say 60 now, 80 is fine. Let's align it left and on top. Uh, let's give it a border space of 20, 40, so it doesn't stick in the corner. Maybe here also 20. Um, again, sorry guys, we don't want this to say derivative, we want this to say. This expression. This says get my parents parameter title uh, and turn it into a string. Now, when we uh, turn this expression on, we get an error. Everything is red, and the error says basically that this uh, operator, this parent operator, which is source zero, doesn't have an attribute title. And that's very true. So that's why we're going to give this container, this one, an attribute title. And we're going to do that with a custom component because that way you can very easily just write in a name and list there. To do that, you right click the component, say customize component. Uh, and here you can add custom parameters to the Object. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is called page. We call this source. Now we've got a, a page on which we can put parameters. This one, and we're gonna add a parameter which is gonna be a string. So we can just type anything, and that is also is gonna be called type. So add. Make sure is there is enabled. Bam. Very good. So now we've got that parameter title, but the error message is still there. The 
error message is not there anymore. So now we want to see what's actually happening in there. So we're gonna go to look and in background top we're gonna write slash out one. Um, this gives us a preview of the out, or which is in this node. So we now see what is happening in that node. Um, it's not scaled properly because also this one isn't scaled properly as, uh, yet. Let me just do that and also give it a 1280, 720, so everything is in the same um, aspect ratio. So now, oops, sorry. Now, thanks to our custom parameter, we can call this, for example, camera stage. And um, this should be written here now. Now, I made a little mistake. I patched out one to the preview. What I really want to do is to patch text two to the preview. So I have to go here to look and change this to text two. Enter. So, uh, what we could do now is just copy paste this guy. Um, and I'm actually really wondering why we're not doing that. But I think it's because I want um, to show you another useful functions for these kind of things. And as this is a tutorial, we might just as well learn something. So, we're gonna add a replicator. We want this operator um, to replicate by number, and the number is going to be 70. So now we've got source 0, which is our master, and we want to source 1 to 16 as copies. Um, so this is going to be our master operator. And the name we want all these things to have the source underscore. So now we've got um, 16 sources, but they're not in the right spot. So we're going to change this here from grid to vertical. And then we're going to use these values to move our ins into a nice position for what we're going to do. So, now that we've got this, we can connect all the outs to the ins of the switcher. And we're going to have to do this patiently by hand. So this looks about right. So now we've got that all set up. Um, let's jump back inside and see what's happening here. Okay, we've got switches with all our ins. They go through the cross, they go through the out. So what we want to do now is not is to build a nice little interface in which we can select the sources. So to do that we lay down another container and we call that selector A. This um, is going to get a size of 640 by 360 and um, we're going to jump inside. Um, and just check what we're going to do exactly. We're going to uh, set up a classical render setup by laying down a um, geo node. Um, 
camera node, uh, light, and uh, render. And we're also going to add a constant map. So let's bring these in order. I actually forget the geometry. So we have a camera, we have a light, we have a geometry, we have a render. We're going to put the constant due to the geometry as a material. Um, and we're going to dive into the geo, delete the torus, um, lay down a rectangle sub. sub and give that the size, uh, turn on the render and the display flex and give that a size of um, 1 and here we're gonna have um, 1 times 9 divided by 16 so we get 16 to 9 image because maybe later we're going to change the size. We're going to make this a bit more procedural. So we're going to say we're going to take size x, copy it here. We can shorten this by saying my parameter size x times 9 divided by 16 will give us always a 16 to 9 image. However, we change the size here, but leave it at 1 now. We're going to see how that works for us. So now we've got this one. Uh, next we want to place a rectangle sub again. No, excuse me, a grid sub. A grid sub, uh, which is going to provide us with um, points. That points we're going to use to instance on. So um, we're going to make this grid, give it a size of 4 and of 2.25. Again, we could do the same thing here. Say this times 9 divided by 16 gives us also this. Um, let's have a look at this as a wireframe. That's not good. Polygon. Um, and we're going to have 4 by 4 rows and color. This will give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 dots um, where we can place our stuff. So on we go and turn that into a chop. Um, this is good. This is everything we need. I'm um, going to add like a merge job because later other stuff is going to be added to that and we run that into a null um, which we're going to make selective check for everything. If I'm not totally mistaken this stops basically every unnecessary cooking here and only this one only cooks when um, really some change is happening. So after having some cooking problems, I now make this a practice to always have these selective nulls. I'm not sure yet if it has the desired effect, but hopefully it does. So what we do is we're going to call this null instancer, because that's what we're going to use to instance. And one more thing before we use that is actually we add a pattern. Pattern. Um, a ramp with a length of 16, um, which makes us uh, numbers from the range from 1 to 16. Now we're going to merge that in here. Uh, we check it's 16 numbers. It's always useful if you check if all the things you put together in a merge for an instancing have the same number of points and you can also visualize that um, dot per sample so these are descriptions for our uh, channels um, and this one we're going to rename from channel 1 to text 
because um, that is going to help us. It generates now 16 numbers, so each of these numbers is going to be a source, uh, which is going to be mapped to our instance. So what we can do now is we can use um, this instancer on the geo. Going to the instance page, turning instancing on and feeding it the instancer. Um, and now I can select TX, TY, TZ properties um, coming from the grid to place these things here. Um, I have to zoom out a little bit and Certainly, it's not really necessary to use a, a perspective camera. Everything could be easier if we use it flat, but um, I think this is nicer. So now um, we can continue and we can, um, on page two, feed um, the texture index text. Um, so that each of the uh, 16 instances will get an individual texture with the number text and now we have to fill in here a pass to the instance textures and the instance textures that we want to use are those and what we actually want to use is not those but is here the text node in here because that has the writing. So we want for our interface, we want to have the writing for our switcher later, we want to use the pew signal. So how do we tell this to the instancing? I'm gonna start by saying we're on the top of our project, project one. In there we want to go into all of the sources source underscore 1 minus 16 means look into source 1 to 16 and there you're going to find operators, an operator called text2. So this wildcard here gives us textures from 1 to 16 and this number says each of the instance has a number. So what we see here now is already a preview um, with this really strange effect now that the numbers are wrong. Um, let's see, this has to do with something what I did here. Um, and it's really weird when I did it the first time, it worked with some settings. That made totally sense to me, and then after that, it never did again. So, here probably we have to say 0 to 16. Okay, and now it works with these settings again. Yesterday I did it, I had to say amplitude of 2. Day not. Who knows? However, I'm not totally happy with the distribution, but that's uh, quite easy now because here I can just scale it in a little bit. Like this, and then use the camera to zoom a bit closer. That's the big advantage of making it 3D because now some things like that become very easy. So, this is what we get. Um, let me check if I forgot something. I don't think so. Um, what we should do is run this to an out. So we can actually see it on the container. Um, boot slash out 1. Here we go. So now what I want to do is to make this panel clickable and get the information which of the sources I have clicked on. To do that, we need to add some more nodes, but not that many. The most important of them is um, a panel mode. 
that is automatically set to the panel is living in, which is this, selector A. And um, we don't want to know everything from this. We want to know select. That means if, when something is clicked, and we want a U and we want a V. That's the UV coordinates of the point where it has to, where it has been clicked. Um, this information we turn into a dot with a chop to dot. Um, and from there we're gonna go to a render pick. So um, the chop to dot needs um, just to include the names. Um, and that's it. And the render pick needs to know a which strategy and the strategy is um, hold last picked. Uh, next cook faster is good pick radius is three. Uh, it wants to know which render we are referring to. Oop. This reminds me that we also have to set the size of this render not to 1280 by 720, which is default, but to 640 by 360, which is half the size, which is exactly what we need. We don't need to render anymore. So from the render pick, we are not interested in too much stuff, but we're interested in um, having it in camera space, and we want to fetch the instance IDs. So now let's check if that works. Yes, but we're still getting too much information, so we need to use a select dot and filter out um, we want to select only row one and we want to select the columns the name instance and we only want that column. So now we get that number, and that number should correspond to the channels. It doesn't exactly, because it starts with zero. Yeah. There it is, the fucking problem. We just see that we skipped the nine this time. Mm. Let's see. That helps. No. One, two, three, four, five. Don't ask me. Amplitude of 0 0.95. However, we get 60 numbers now. How does that work for our select? 0, 15. Okay. That's not really a drama for us. We gonna turn that back into a chop. Um, this settings channel per column the first row is values second row is values so 
and we want to rename this to name to source A. Let's see if these numbers are a problem. I guess they are, so let's insert a math which takes this value range from zero to fifteen to one to sixteen. Okay. So let's take this and send it to an out so we can use it on the outside and also um, run this into a fan and this 16 outputs. So now 16 1 1 uh -huh. um, So the mass is not really necessary. That's why I didn't have it before. What do we learn? Do not improvise in tutorials. So we've got the fan here, we've got the out there. Let's see what's next. Yeah, we should run this into a shuffle. And swap channels and samples. So we now get this in a way that we can use it for our instancing. Um, and we want to use this in two different ways. So we need two mass chops who will give us different um, ranges. And um, we are also going to rename them. So that one of them is called select, and the other one of them is called highlight. Um, so what ranges are we going to give them? This one should get a range from 1 to 0 0.75. Um, so that means usually it's at 1 unless it becomes selected, then it becomes 0 0.75. Um, and the other one should get a value range from 0 0.75 to 1.5. We have the opposite thing if it's selected, the value is high. Now, move this back a little bit. to this level because these two are also going to merge into instancer it must be available now in geo where we're going to put highlight onto the alpha channel we're going to put select on the x um, scale x and the scale y layer. So what that does is that the thing that I've clicked is now going to be scaled in to maybe make this a bit 
uh, nicer to look at, uh, which is obviously totally not necessary, but uh, we can go for it. Um, we are gonna put a filter in here. Because this is not just a single time slice, but a whole range, we need to say filter per sample. Um, and then we're going to add another null. And we're going to make that selective. So now you see these channels are constantly broadcasting data. They cook in all the time. And what I hope now is that this null makes an end to it. What I also hope is that this filter makes the animation much smoother. So let's place wires. You see now the green lines are very calm so unless something changes nothing is getting broadcasted here all the time. So nothing works anymore. Why? Maybe this is a bit too selective. So no, it doesn't really check, it's not selective enough. See and here we get our nice filtered animation. We can make the filter a bit less so it becomes a bit more responsive. And now we can check what comes out of this outlet by Looking at the nulls, we see A, we get our selected preview. And remember, every signal that we plug in on the other side will end up here in our preview. And we get the number of the selected object. We don't really need this one, but we will need this one. And we will need this one because for our cross fade, we need to know which side is active. Um, so we're going to need to know which state we're in. Um, we also want to be able to switch that state. And uh, what we can do now is by clicking on the video, we can make that video active in the switcher. So now we can quite easily do that by just hooking up this value to the switcher. So now you see we have the ability to switch between these different sources. Um, and my thinking is that basically we can make another panel with the selected source, and when I click that selected source, that's the source that's going to be live. Um, so we're going to add another container. We're going to call that um, select A. Not selector. So inside that select A, we again want to ask what's going on with this panel, which is me. Um, so we need a panel top, and this time uh, we only want to know if it's select or not, because it's going to be all over the whole container, and we're going to send this to an out. We're also going to add uh, in top, in top, we're going to connect that to an out top. 
October. And so far, this node doesn't really do anything, but we're going to add a rectangle on top here. And um, we're going to do that because we want that source which is selected to get like a big orange frame. So we know that's the one which is on air and the other one isn't. So in this panel, we're going to build a possibility to make a yellow uh, orange frame around um, our source and later we're gonna switch that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to uh, 1280 by 720. That's also the resolution I'm gonna set. Um, I'm gonna set the fill alpha to zero but I'm gonna set the border color to orange and I'm gonna make the border with pixels I'm going to add 10 pixels. Actually, it should be visible. Let's try. What's happening? And you see that this also needs the 640 by 360. Um, and here is the orange bar. We're going to leave it like that for now. Um, let's see if this gives us the right information. Yes, so now we have a clickable preview of the selected source. And um, now is the point I'm afraid we have to go and do a little script. But first what we want to know is uh, which of these two is selected. So we need a central place where we can store that information. So we're going to lay down a constant. We're going to call that state. And um, then we're going to add um, a chop execute dot. That is monitoring what's coming out of this. So is this selected or not? And um, whenever it is selected, so we're going to monitor. Wait, this is our job execute. We're going to monitor this null. We're going to look for the value select, and if it goes from off to on. We're gonna trigger a little script in here, and that script reads operator state parameter value zero, which is like the first of the numbers in the constant, equals zero. So, this is value no. Um, let's give it some value and try if that works. Yes. So you see, when I click this, this goes zero. So the natural opponent to this one will be the same thing on the B side, and that will turn state to one. So whenever one side is always going to turn turn state to zero, the other one is going to turn state to one. That way we're going to know which state's always going to know who's who's on. So I think now is the time to copy this whole stuff down there and make it work for the B side. So it is almost as easy as that, but there's like a few tiny things that we have to change. First of all, this has to come from here. Um, this is alright, but this one should set state 
to 1. Also, this output should be called source B. So, to go to the rename and rename this to source B. And let me check if that is everything. Um, so now these switch state. And what we want to do now is to make state switch the orange frame. So I'm gonna state here, gonna dive in there. And basically so if state is zero, this has to be visible. So let's take this to the border alpha. Say one minus state. It means when state is zero, it is visible. Let's copy this. Let's go to the other side. Paste this. Put here without the one minus. So this one becomes one. Zero. So let's just see if that does what we want. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Uh, now we want to use state to drive that across and to make that we make it a tiny bit nicer by adding a lag. And again, um, no. We call that no. fade for mainly traditional reasons um, and then we're gonna connect xfade to cross and let's see five, 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 five. is right always the one with the orange border is also live on the output which is this one so um, if you look at this from the outside, it doesn't look quite as we want it yet. Stuff is disorganized here. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is to organize it in here. I'm going to do that by opening the palette browser and getting me an empty panel from the tweak window parts. Empty panel. I quite like them. I know that this empty panel um, should have a size from 280 by 360 and that these two panels should go in here. So this panel on the children's side should say left to right or should say right to left with the numbers on the left and here's my thing. And I'm going to copy that and repeat this process down here. So I have to disconnect these ones. So now I have two panels which each stupid hold one instance of that thing. Okay, again. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, now I have two panels. Is that right? Yes. And the upper panel, um, I just have to change this here to children align from top to bottom. And let's give this a try. Almost works. But not here. Let's see what's wrong here. Because I had the impression it was actually working. Okay, this is not connected here. So nothing easier than that. Let's just be driven by source B. And now we should see the behavior that we want. Um, now that we've got this, we could take care of the output. So we lay down another container, 
also deserves to be a bit bigger than the rest of the world. Um, we call that output. Uh, let's go in there and place uh, in top. And an NDI out. Out. This one we're going to call TD final. And this one we're gonna say he wants to look at dot slash in one. So now we all have to do is to connect the switcher to the output and we have to adjust the resolution in that case. Uh, we want this also to be one to eighty part seven twenty. So now we're basically set. Um, if you want to output that, there's like one way you could do it, like you could place down two window comps, one for the switcher and one for the output. And you would want to turn buttons off. Um, automatic and put this on monitor zero. You always maybe set it to build location. Uh, you can't see it but on me it's full screen now and the same thing you could do with the output window. Just feed it this operator, set it to screen one, build location, turn off the borders and Open. There you go. Or if you want to make it a tiny bit more effective on your GPU, you just open one output window. No, first, you add another container with a size of 0 0.280 by 1440 and you Feed these two into it and you set it to top to bottom. And you get this kind of scenario which you can then output through a single window. Um, which will make it a tiny bit more effective on your GPU because you don't have to deal with like a very wide image but something which is almost square and if a GPU will like something, then it's a square image. So that's basically it for the switcher. The way I would run it is to have like two monitors, one for the switcher, one for the output, and then I could toggle between the switcher and working with the network, uh, the open network, or um, another possibility would also be to just um, not see the output, just broadcast the output to the internet and um, work with just open touch designer network and the switcher full screen. So now we can start to plug in here some sources just to show you that it actually works. So here's our test pattern and here we see it on the switcher and now I can select it and take it to the output. I think at this point um, this tutorial has come to a point where you can easily move on for yourself so I can just recommend to play with all kind of sources. Um, there is also a very nice NDA app for your mobile so you can stream your mobile phone's camera. As an NDI stream, you can 
grab stuff from uh, browser windows. You can use just regular touch designer uh, inputs. Uh, the mixer will not care. Um, if you have any questions uh, or can tell me how I can do some things more effective, please let me know. Um, thank you very much for your attention and see you another time.